Hey guys, Christina Marie here. We're filming in my new spot. It's still bare because I haven't done anything with it yet. But I'm here with a book review for you guys because this is actually a book that I read during the Booktubeathon, which is still happening right now as I film this. I just need to take a break and I needed to talk about some things. <sighs> One of those things being this book, Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. I told myself I was going to review this book as soon as I was done reading it because I wanted all of the information to still be fresh in my head. But also I want to talk about feelings when it comes to a book. Um, a lot of times people classify whether they really liked a book based on how they felt when it was over. Meaning if they felt happiness, you know, or as they felt sadness or anger or something like that. And a lot of people equate happiness with the book being good or angry with the book being bad. Um, I personally am having a conflict of those emotions right now because of this book, which is why I wanted to bring it up. This book is the most frustrating, upsetting, sad, happy, depressing, disgusting, book one of the most all of the above that I have ever read and I will tell you why. Forbidden is a book about an incestuous relationship. Um, a brother and sister end up falling in love after their drunken mother leaves them to raise their three younger siblings. In taking on those parental roles of mother and father they begin to care for each other in a way that is more romantic than um, familial. Now, while that is the main topic of the book, there are a lot of underlying issues such as um, mental um, disabilities, um, abuse, just dysfunctional family, um, all of those things and this book just throws them all at you and in a way that quite frankly I wasn't able to take and process and recover from as quickly as I I initially thought um Okay, let's just get into the review. If you have not read the book, you should probably stop watching this video now because I'm about to talk about this book. Okay, so Forbidden follows the lives of siblings Maya and Loken, Lucan, Lachan, Lashan, Lotion. I don't know the boy's name. I can't pronounce it. Loki, Loshi, whatever. L-O-C-H-A-N. That's his name. I'm going to call him Lo. That's what I'm going to call him. Um, Maya and Lo, um, and just their relationship. So first of all, for the first half of the book, I was so in tune. I knew what was coming. I knew the relationship that was going to develop, and I saw how it was going to develop. Their mother was useless utterly useless and for me personally the worst kind of parent is a mother like theirs a lot of you already know my father abandoned me when I was little all that kind of stuff so I, I have a thing about parents who don't take on their role as parents so I was already pissed off at the mother in this book because she would rather pretend like she doesn't have five kids she's depressed about her ex-husband leaving her she's found this boyfriend that she's dressing up for spending all the family money on and trying to be this that and the other to this new dude Dave and he has no intention of marrying her as he stated he has his own ish to deal with he who doesn't want to take on five other kids so she rather ignore the kids and act like they don't exist and start building a life with Dave and Dave doesn't even want to marry her so there's that frustration number one the first half of the book I really, really enjoyed. It was so emotion filled, so raw, so well written. Tabitha just painted this picture of a dysfunctional, downtrodden, naive, 
because there's three younger kids that are still naive to the fact, well, not really three, two younger kids, because Kit is 13. He's starting to learn what's going on. And Kit is his own issue. That's another issue that we're going to talk about. Uh, but the little ones, what is his name? Willa and Tiff. Will and Tiff are still a little naive to the fact that their mother is an alcoholic. Like their mother is not around because she doesn't want to be around. She's not working. Well, she does have a job, but she's not working. That's that's not why she's away. She's away because she wants to be away because you they're, those kids are not a priority to her. But Willa and Tiff aren't, they, they're too young to understand that. And so um, Maya and Lo, Lo are trying to bridge that gap and they're trying to protect that family because once word gets out that mother is an alcoholic social services has to come in and take those kids away and separate the family there's five kids there's rarely a foster family that is going to want to take in five kids so they're going to be separated and that is lo i'm just going to try and say it. Loken's. that is Loken's greatest fear pretty much is them being separated. So because he has such a fear of them being separated, he works so hard to keep the family together. He feeds them, clothes them, t puts them to bed, gets them to school. And of course, Maya helps out, but Maya's 16. Loken's almost 18, so he's about to become a legal adult. And really in that stage, he's supposed to be worrying about himself going off to school and um, you know, trying to build a better life and all that, but he can't think about that because he's so focused on his family and trying to keep them together and then on top of that Logan has um some kind of anxiety issue to where he freaks out and just shuts down when surrounded by people when confronted you know when asked to public speak anything that involves dealing with someone that is not part of his family he shuts down and closes he's done like it's it's he goes into panic he has he suffers major panic attacks um and the only person that can like that gets him and really is able to get him out of that is Maya his sister Maya and Logan have grown up as friends really they it's explicitly stated in this book that neither one of them felt like they were siblings they always felt like they were best friends because they went through their dad walking out on them and everything and they both kind of have to come together as the two oldest to take care of the family because the mother was useless um so we learn about Logan and I really start to love that boy I really start to really care about him and just want all good things for him because he is busting his butt he has some anger issues but there's there for me it's understandable now, Maya, she is a very compassionate, consoling, you know, mediator, wanting everyone to just calm down and be peaceful. And she was Logan's safe place, her his safe person. He would go to her, you know, when his world got too rough. And they that was cool. That's an awesome, you know, brother sister relationship. I didn't you know that's not something to think much of. Um especially given their circumstances. So because Logan's so busy and Maya's so busy they're taking care of the little ones, picking them up from school, all that kind of stuff, they don't really have much social life. They can't hang out after school. They can't play sports. They can't do all of these things. And so they have each other. So they're spending all their time together. And you slowly start to see the signs in the book of, of what it's turning into. The things that they notice about each other. The curve of the hip. You know, the, the structure of the jawline. You know, the hands. Wondering what it's like to hold hands. Wondering, looking at their soft, plump, plump lips. Like, it's... it's pretty descriptive enough that you start to see the signs of where this is going and it gradually happened and it's you you it wasn't like page one page ten oh there it is it was a really gradual relationship that formed rain and the first half of the book progressed so, so well. And Loken's reactions to his 
own revelation of how he feels about his sister was so heartbreaking. It was gut-wrenchingly painful for me because he, oh, the way that that scene was written where he just finally came to terms with, oh my gosh, ah, you know, he has social anxiety. He can't get close to girls. He can't make friends. The one person that he finally decides that he wants is his sister. The one person he wants is this person that he can't have. And so you feel the emotion behind that and you feel the internal struggle that he is having. And I empathize with him so much in that particular situation because while I can't understand what it feels like to fall in love with your sibling, one, I'm an only child. <laughs> so I would never have that problem. But two, I can understand what it feels like to want something that you know without a shadow of a doubt you cannot have. I can empathize on that level. So I was there with Logan. I was in his brain. The second half of the book, things started to come, up, come apart for me. Let me talk about Kit. Kit is a 13 year old boy who is too big for his britches. He needs to come down a peg. He's, he's rebelling, you know, he's angry at his dad, he's angry at his mom, and he's directing all of that anger at Loken because Loken's the man of the house. And so he's out, Kit is out doing drugs and missing curfew and staying out late and things got violent between him and Loken at one point and Kit, While I wanted to f feel, I needed more out of that relationship between Kit and Maya, as well as Kit and Logan. I needed more there. I just felt like they let things slide under the radar a little too much. Not they, but Suzuma. Um, because I just felt like he didn't develop in a way that really made me think this book is going to be awesome. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like Kit's character was missing something for me. Um, and I feel like it happened at the end, at the very, very end of the book is when it started to happen. And maybe it was supposed to be that way. I don't know. But it didn't happen in the places where it felt like it needed to and that was really really frustrating. Kit just got away with too much for me. I know he's going through stuff but so is everybody else in that damn family and you don't see him acting like that. Um, but the second half of the book where Maya and Logan are trying to figure out their feelings for each other. Logan is so, he's so analytical. He's trying to think of the big picture. He's trying to think of what would happen to his family. What would happen to him? What would happen to Maya? What would happen to society? How would people receive them? He was thinking of all of those things and I understood that. That is the proper way for, in my brain to process a huge decision like that. An illegal one at that. Cause you couldn't, you go to jail for incest. Incest is illegal and Maya just wasn't thinking in that capacity for me and that was really really frustrating like she just no one has to know we can do it we can run away we can do this don't tell anybody we can just sneak around and I'm just like think girl and she's 16 yeah yeah and he was just trying to be Logan was trying to be the adult in the situation he was trying so so hard bless his soul he really really was and um there were moments where him and Maya just would fight and just run off in anger and just fight and just come back together and all these things. His and Maya's relationship was so up, down, up, down, up, down, in, out, up, down, all around, all around. He had so many panic attacks and he just was torturing himself because of what he was feeling. And I felt like Maya didn't get that. She didn't get that. And she just, it was about her. I felt like you know and, and that that is just where my frustration came with this book now it, 
things were also extremely repetitive. I mean, extremely. Maya, I heard you. I got you the first time, girl. Don't say it again. Don't do it again. We know. We know. We know. Maya, we know. We know. Yes, you love them. Yes, you want to do it. Yes, you want to hide. Yes, you want to run away. We know already. I get it. Can you not grasp that Logan? He can't think like that. That is why I was so frustrated with this book. Now, I feel like Maya backs him into a corner at one point, unintentionally or intentionally. I can't, I've yet to figure that out. I feel like she backs him into a corner where he decides that he'd rather, he, he, he plays Russian roulette and he risks it all for her and then it all backfires. And um, the reason why it backfires is because mom, in one of her rare appearances, comes home and finds them in the midst of, you know, trying to do the do. And she calls the police. Logan gets arrested and for, for um, sexually abusing his sister. And it was Kit that actually saw and told mom. And he didn't know that mom would call the police. And so that is when Kit changed is when he realized that Loken was going away like dad. And so Loken, his only father figure, his second father figure is going away. You know, and that that was one of the things that really made Kit so angry to begin with. And so to see it happen again at his own doing, I felt bad for Kit in that moment, but I also want to strangle his scrawny little ass because of the whole book um the ending it needed to happen the way that it did but i didn't like it um logan that poor poor tortured soul had been through so much he wanted to pre protect that family so much that his life was sacrificed for it he wanted to keep his family together so badly um, he ended up committing suicide when he was in jail and um, yeah and Maya completely tortured and in, in gut-riching pain over Logan's death wanted to take her own life too but she couldn't because she didn't want Logan's life to be she don't want Logan's sacrifice to be in vain. So she knew she needed to stay behind and take care of the kids. Um, and that's really how the book ends is just with her making the decision to live on. It was a really, really compelling story. It was very emotional, very raw, very real. But like I said, it, there were times when it was just so repetitive and I feel like it was a hundred pages too long. I really, really do. I feel it was about 100 pages too long. It didn't need to be as long as it was. Yeah, uh, it was just, it was a lot. There was a disconnect for me in the second half of the book, as I've said. The first half was perfect, but because by the end of this book, I was at such an unsettled place, and a lot of that had to do with the topic of the book. Um, I can't give this book a full-on four stars. I gave it a 3.5 five stars I really did enjoy this book but there were just things that didn't work for me um here's the thing when it comes to what the story is about I am a lover of love I love 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 stories of all kinds I absolutely love so here's the thing throughout this book there were times that Maya just creeped me out more than Logan did the cons the idea of incest it really creeped me out on part of Maya because she just felt so gung-ho about it she was like let's go for it let's do it no one has to know screw what everybody else thinks as I've said before at least Logan had the decency to be like whoa this is sick we are weird this is effed up like he said all the things you know Eventually he gave in, but temptation, you know, I get it. Temptation is strong, but he at least had the decency, I think, to feel 
jaded by it. And I just don't feel like I got that from Maya. I didn't get that at all. This 16 year old girl loved her brother and she wanted her brother. He was just like, whoa, I shouldn't be wanting my sister. At least those thoughts were there. I felt like Maya was just creepy McCreepster. I feel like she just was, she was just creepy. And so that just kind of fucked with the brain a little bit. I do think that Suzuma did an excellent job of making me care for these characters, despite what they were doing. <laughs> Despite that, I cared about these characters. I didn't want anything bad to happen to them at all. I wanted them to be okay. And unfortunately, I knew going into this book, I said, this is not a story that's going to end well. It just can't. It just won't. I just feel like it won't. <laughs> Overall, I do recommend this book. Um, I recommend anybody read it. It's, it's uncomfortable. It'll make you uncomfortable. I think it will. And it should. It should make you uncomfortable. But it should also, also make you question. While incest is the primary topic of this book, there are so many underlying themes that you can connect to as a reader. You know, like I said, mental illness, panic attacks, dysfunctional families, familial abuse, just all that kind of stuff. You'll you'll be able to find something to connect with. So that is my review on this book. That Those are my thoughts. Comment down below, excuse me, <clears throat> if you've read this book or if you want to read this, just comment down below with anything if you've read it. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Like, and how do you feel about reading books of hugely controversial topics such as incest? Like, what do you guys think? Is that something you do? Are you comfortable with that? Or is that something you just kind of shy away from because you don't want to have that kind of discomfort in your reading world? Just comment down below. I'm curious to know. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to get back to reading for the Booktubeathon now because, uh, Mama's a little bit behind for the day, but I'll finish the book that I'm reading. But yes, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.